It's future Chris here. It's been a few days since I filmed this Talking Heads segment, which I'm editing now. And a few things have actually come up about this gimbal since then. Um, so I'm gonna keep intervening to uh, give you the update on each segment. This is the Moza Aircross 3. It's a small to medium sized gimbal, and I think it may be one of the best on the market. There are some caveats to this though, which I'll get into later. So the gimbal I'm coming from using this is the Zian Weeble S. Um, which is the gimbal I've been using for a couple of years now. And also, Goodson actually sent me this for review. But those of you who have watched my Zian Weeble 2 review will know that even though companies send me products, I'm quite honest about reviewing them. Okay, so first up, what's the build quality like? And, and what's new here? It just feels like the center of gravity is in the right place. The materials feel all high quality. It's either metal or really high quality plastics in a lot of places. Um, and it just feels good in the hand. It's a lot more comfortable to grip than the Aircross 2 was. Obviously, like any gimbal, it's got the axis locks with these little red switches here, um, and it's got one of those on each axis, and you actually balance it with just these little levers, which is kind of better than just having to screw something. You just undo a lever, balance it, tighten that lever up again. It's quicker than having to screw something undone. But this gimbal does have a little trick up its sleeve. At first glance, it's just a regular one-handed gimbal, but if you unscrew this magic screw here, and press the magic red button at the front, then it does fold like that. Once you've unfolded the gimbal, there's actually a tripod thread in the fold you can attach some tripod legs to, and then if you detach the bottom ones, you'll notice there's a second tripod thread just off center here that you can attach the tripod legs to, and then you get a really nice underslung mode. Now the benefit of this underslung mode is you can actually put the gimbal down, so you can pretty much keep it in this mode for the whole day, um, but you don't want to be changing between underslung mode and normal mode with the camera on the gimbal. You will have to turn it off and take the camera off to change between these two modes. A very small complaint though, you'll see that on the inside here where the tripod thread is, um, there is a little sort of metal hole there, I guess. And basically what this done is it sort of shaved part of my, part of the rubber grip off of the tripod legs. Quick update from Future Chris, uh, those tripod legs are now Another benefit of this folded design is it just makes the gimbal so small and easy to transport around. Um, this easily fits in the top of my Peak Design um, backpack and I actually carry gimbals in the Peak Design sling, um, which again, this fits in really easily, just as much as the Weeble S. The main issue with this mode for me is you do lose access to the controls and the screen when you're in this mode. The pan arm sort of covers the screen and buttons, so it's hard to do anything with them while you've got this folded. Also, kind of a big thing, mine appears to be broken now. So it appears I'm stuck in an underslung mode forever. I'm not sure if it's saying I did, um, but it just will not lock close anymore. Yeah, a bit awkward that one. It's also so easy to get this thing into portrait mode. You can literally slip the base plate off the bottom and slide it onto the side like so, and wham, you're in portrait mode. So I thought I'd just put a camera on this to better show you some of the features. Okay, so there's four modes here. It's the default mode, which is just the pan follow mode, just follows the pan motor. Then you've got pan tilt, so that will also tilt and pan. Then you've got FPV, which basically sort of follows all the axis there. And then you've just got all lock mode, where it just locks all of the axis, just facing one direction there. You can also get into the lock mode. So right now I'm in pan follow mode, just by holding the trigger at any point. But again, the trigger is actually really hard to access um, when you're in the folded mode because it's sort of on the bottom and you have to hold it weirdly. So you can do everything you need, change modes, uh, tune the motors, um, control your camera, everything just through here without having to use an app, which is kind of the way I like to use the gimbals. Normally I just set them once and I'm done um, and I don't need to change the settings again for the rest of the time I use the gimbal pretty much. So enough of the chit chat, none of this actually matters unless it can stabilize your footage. So let's get into some test footage, um, show you what that looks like, and then we come back here and review it. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, I do lots of videos on gimbals and cameras and all that kind of stuff. So do hit that subscribe button.
Okay, so overall the footage is actually really nice on this gimbal. It's just heavy enough that you don't get those little micro jitters, but the motors seem really powerful too. Um, and it's definitely very usable footage in most circumstances for me. The only issue I did have um, was that when I set the motors to auto strength, so you can do a sort of auto calibration where it detects the weight um, of the camera setup and it'll automatically adjust the motor strength depending on the weight of the camera setup. Now when I did this, um, it actually didn't seem to work very well and I did get very shaky footage from this. So I ended up just putting all the motor strengths to full um, and I'm hoping for the best. And this did do the trick, um, but I imagine this reduces battery life quite a bit. Overall, I think this gimbal is incredibly easy to use. The menu system is very simple and it also gives you a couple of different ways to use the gimbal. Obviously in one-handed mode, in underslung mode, without too much trouble as well. So it's sort of a two-in-one gimbal as well. The controls are easy to figure out and they just work. Obviously, again, if you're looking for more of a manual control over your gimbal, then you're not gonna get this here. But I think five increments is just enough for me. Something which I can't make the most of because I don't have one is you can actually attach this to the Moza slide pod, which is basically a monopod with a slider built in. Then you can use the app to create some really nice automated movements. So if you are invested in the ecosystem with Moza, um, you can actually build some really nice rigs. So with other gimbals out on the market, why should you buy the Aircross 3 um, over those other gimbals? Well, this comes in about the same price as the Xeon Weeble 2. Again, if you haven't seen my review, I'll put it up here and down here. Um, and I think it's a little bit lighter than the Weeble 2. And also on the Weeble 2, you could only use the controls if you were right-handed because of the way they designed it. But obviously you can use the controls here whether you're left or right-handed, um, which obviously is a bonus or a benefit um, over the Weeble 2. I also had a few firmware issues with the Weeble 2 where there's a lot of shaking going on, a lot of that proper vibration, um, even when you balanced it perfectly. This, again, they've sent it to me. It's a pretty new product. Um, I haven't updated the firmware or anything and it's already working pretty much flawlessly. Um, so there is that. It's also a similar price to this, the DJI Ronin SC2, which I've also been testing out on a few shoots. And this one also folds up. But when you do use it in folded mode, there's actually no way to put it down. Um, so you're kind of stuck like that and you can't put it down anywhere. Whereas obviously, like I said earlier, the Aircross 3, you can put it down um, with the tripod legs with the thread inside the uh, gimbal. So if you're looking for a small to medium sized gimbal at the moment, I do think this is the one of the best on the market. If you're willing to put up with that fiddly access to the buttons and the screen in the underslung mode. Also keep an eye on that folding mechanism. I imagine it's just a fluke that mine's broken, um, but yeah, something to bear in mind. I love the design, it's easy to use and the footage looks great from it. It's a massive improvement in my opinion from the Aircross 2 um, and I'll definitely be using this gimbal going forward. That's been it from me. If you found this video informative or helpful at all, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this on filmmaking on the go, then hit the subscribe button. And if you've got any comments or questions about this gimbal, then leave them down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.